Hi guys, this is Shannon from Reptile Way and I'm so excited to bring you this video. It's taken a couple months to uh, do the entire video, um, but it's pretty much how to create something like the enclosure behind me, uh, a naturalistic cave uh, rock type background. And uh, this video is pretty much a step-by-step -step guide of where you can go to buy the materials and how you can create something like this. So let's get into this video. Now, before you do decide to create something in your enclosure, whether that's backdrops or things to put in it or an entire enclosure build, um, it's really good to sort of plan what you really want. Um, so what I did before I even created this was I went on a little adventure to um, Crocosaurus Cove and to the Territory Wildlife Park. Um, so some parks that are near me that keep a lot of reptiles just for some inspiration and some ideas on some rock features and what's gonna look really cool in an enclosure. So I'll pop a link in the description below to this particular video. Also, this is what the video looks like on our YouTube channel. If you wanna check that out, get some ideas for yourself. But definitely step one is get some inspiration and do a plan of what you want your background or whatever you're designing to look like. Now at Reptile Way, we're all about trying to do things on a budget. So for me personally, if I can pick up secondhand enclosures, that's generally my go-to. So I am on most of the Facebook groups um, that uh, talk about reptiles. And there's one particular one in the NT that was always selling enclosures. Um, so this is where I managed to pick up two enclosures for $90. This one was 50. And uh, it also came with a bunch of stuff in one of the enclosures too. Um, so it worked out very, very cheap for this particular enclosure. It just had a slight crack on the bottom, um, but I managed to silicone that up and make sure it's secure. Now these enclosures were pretty filthy, so I did a deep, deep clean, used a lot of bleach, earth dishwashing liquid, and hosed it out, let it dry in the UVB sun, and this is just gonna kill off any nasties that could have a detrimental impact to the reptile you're about to put in your enclosure. Now here's a list of materials um, that you'll need for this build. I did try to do this build um, pretty simple, especially when it comes to the painting and adding details. This is quite good for a beginner, but I'm gonna put a list of all the different supplies you'll need up on the screen. So you can screenshot it, and again, everything you can get from Bunnings, um, which makes it quite easy if you're in Australia. Now, unfortunately for the foaming part, um, I had my camera on a different angle, so it doesn't take up the whole screen. So apologies for that, but that's just for part of the foaming section. Um, majority of the video does go full screen. Uh, so I've realized that, that's a good learning curve. Um, but also when it comes to the foaming process, you can use the um, sort of foam sheets that you can get from Bunnings. If you wanna cut up the foam sheets, I highly recommend using um, one of those wire cutters, those heated wire cutters. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen for you. And you can order this online from Amazon, lots of different places. Um, but it's a lot easier to cut that than a knife. However, when I did test this uh, with the spray foam, uh, it did not like it. So spray foam, better to do with any type of knife, whereas if you're gonna build it majority out of those sheets, definitely one of those heated up wire cutters is the way to go. Now I did use those foam sheets to sort of allow a path for the spray foam to go so it just doesn't go uh, flops out of the enclosure, it can sort of build up in amongst those uh, green ledges that I've siliconed down. And 
This can be sort of a daunting process, the spray foaming, because you're sort of wondering, oh, it looks really messy. And yeah, you've really got to sort of have a vision to the end of this. So don't panic. If you feel like you've done a little mistake with the spray foam, do not worry. You can simply just carve it off. The only thing I would recommend with spray foam is depending on the brand, some can have a bit more spray back. So it could get on glass and things like that. So if you are worried, like I haven't taken the glass doors off because they just won't come out of this secondhand enclosure um, you can just cover the glass up but I did a whole bunch of spray foaming and I probably used about six cans of spray foam and the reason being was I had a lot left over from a big massive build I'm in the process of doing and now you can see I'm spray foaming over that crack and this is where the pond's gonna be. So the spray foam will actually act to keep that glass secure. And yeah, so I decided to build a structure on top of that glass just to make sure it's gonna hold it and the glass won't break any further. Um, so that was my plan for that. And apologies for me uh, looking down. I'm trying to watch along with you guys uh, to sort of give a bit of a description. Now the carving process. In this process, again, I did try using that hot wire to see whether it could cut through the spray foam and it just was not having a bar of it. It only worked well on that uh, green foam sheets. But yeah, the carving process, this is super important. Now, when you're carving the spray foam, you need to carve that entire shiny top layer off the spray foam. Otherwise, when you're grouting, it just won't stick to it. It'll chip, flake off, which you don't want. You want it to last a while. So you must carve all that shiny top layer off the spray foam. And this is the most time consuming part of the entire build. It can take a while to carve that spray foam out and get all the sort of caves, the big sort of textures, cuts in the rocks um, that you would like. So I highly recommend taking your time on this. And for me, I didn't carve it out all in one day. I probably did it over about two, three days just so I could get it perfect. I wasn't rushing it. And yeah, I find that's a good way to go. Spread your carving out because you tend to go a little bit crazy. Um, also, when I was carving out the spray foam, I tried to carve a lot going um, sort of into the, so towards the bottom of the enclosure, I carved a lot of that out to increase the surface area. So underneath that cave, I was actually carving spray foam underneath the cave to increase that surface area. So I wasn't just leaving it like a block. I was actually sort of, how could I describe this? Carving it inwards towards the bottom. Um, again, increasing that surface area. But it does take a while and I was using my hands in there to grab spray foam out. Um, but I just like working with spray foam because you can do so much with it and it can just look pretty natural. And in this particular build, you can see that I've got a sort of larger cave that I was doing at the start, and then I've got a smaller one as well. So it just allows the snake that I'm gonna be putting here is a children's python. It can have a big sort of cave, or if it wants a bit more security, it's got that tighter cave. But there's the carving all done, and believe you me, you get so happy once you've completed the carving. However, I completed the back wall and I was thinking, yeah, we should do the side walls. Um, again, just so it doesn't have like a start and end, it's almost like you've cut a whole big rock formation out and you've just plonked it in an enclosure. So I was doing the side walls. Also, you would have seen a cool technique where I cut off the spray foam sort of pipe and that just means you can reuse it. And also I was filling in all the gaps and holes with spray foam, uh, really important to do. And then carving the side walls again, adding all the textures, all the sort of cuts in the rocks. And I also had the rocks going on an angle. So they all sort of went on a similar sort of angle. Um, if you try, your brain wants to make things super straight, However, it's not gonna look natural. So this is with the side walls carved, we're getting ready to grout. And with me, when I'm making the grout, I put a bit of water in the tub first, 
then I pour the grout, mix it, add water to get a more, more like a, a thick pancake consistency. So I start thick first for the first layer to get that structure. And once you've done that first layer, you may have a few cracks, but then the second, third and fourth layer, it gets slightly thinner. And that last layer is quite a thin layer. Um, so it's quite runny and that's gonna cover all those cracks and make it nice and smooth. But the grouting is an extremely messy process. And with each layer of grout, I use different colors. So you know, oh, I've definitely covered it all. So my bottom layer, I always use the black. Um, just because as well, if you do potentially miss an area, it's gonna look natural being black anyway, but you should really aim for each layer to cover the entire thing. But yeah, the first layer I do is black and time consuming. I use different size brushes too. So to do big sections, I use a larger brush. To do the sections that are near um, where the door tracks are, I'll use a thin brush. But you also see I've covered the tracks in foil. And this just allows the grout to not get into those tracks. It's an absolute pain. Um, yeah, so cover up the tracks and you can use a variety of things. Later on, you'll see me using sticky tape. That is a way better option to cover the tracks and easy to remove. And then as I'm going along grouting, after I've done each layer, I clean up that bottom surface area because, um, yeah, I want that to be kept clean. And then now you can see I've used that sticky tape so much better. Um, so yeah, highly recommend doing that. Now you can see the next layer, I'm using sort of um, a very, very light gray. And then third layer, darker gray. And then that fourth layer, a slightly lighter gray than the previous one. And then cleaning all the tracks, making sure everything's good. And then now this is where it gets to the fun bit. I'm trying to carve out the strata layers in the rock and you can use anything spiky. But what's good, if you go wrong, you can just put some more grout over the top and just cover it over and try again. Just let that grout to sort of almost dry, but it's not completely dry. And that'll allow you to carve it in quite easily. So you sort of want it slightly damp, but pretty much dry and that you'll be able to create the best um, strata layers. You don't want to try do it when it's dry, it'll be way too hard and you won't really be able to carve it in. And again, I'm just going the direction that the rocks are going with my strata layers and I had to use this bent out fork because I couldn't find anything pointy. <laughs> so I thought about this fork and I was just like, I'll just use that. Um, really good options are sort of like uh, wooden skewers. They work really well, a good sort of knife. And there's a variety of things. So anything sharp that you can carve cracks into the rock, um, that'll work. So again, I sort of followed where the rocks were going with um, you know, what I'd carved out and grouted over the top. So you sort of follow along what's already there. And then you can add more details, but it definitely made a difference adding those strata layers. Um, yeah, just to add that realistic touch. If you don't add, you know, the textures in the rock, carve it out. Um, yeah, I think it goes towards the fake side because you wouldn't really find a sort of cave rock formation that doesn't have any strata layers. Um, so highly recommend doing that. It is quite time consuming and messy. You will have to vacuum, clean it up before you start the painting process. Now painting process, this is super easy to do. I decided it looked like slaty rock. So I've just gone black and gray theme. So I put black into a spray bottle, shake it up, give it a test before you actually spray it in your enclosure. And yeah, easiest way to do your enclosure. And this is just acrylic paint that you can get from Bunnings. And then I just spray it in the areas that I would think would be naturally dark. And also what's cool is this paint will run and sit into those strata layers that you've created. You know, adding it to be more realistic and it also gives more of like a worn, the rocks being worn away by water and that's why there's different colors in the rock. So um, you don't need to go get a whole airbrush kit or anything like that. 
a simple $2 spray bottle with some a $2 tube of acrylic paint with some water, uh, shake it up and you could literally just do this stage for the painting and it'll probably be amazing. For me, I do like to add touches after I've done the spray painting. And also with this, when you're um, spraying it, you will add up, it will sort of get quite watery in some spaces. So you just need to dab it, clean it up. Wait for that to completely dry before you do this next stage if you do want to add more detail. So I'm mixing up different greys, blacks, and I just add a little bit more texture. And, and this is a dry brush painting technique. So you don't want the brush to be wet and you sort of dab most of the paint off and then you can sort of brush over it. And it's still gonna get paint on there, but it's not gonna be big dollops. It's, you know, dry brushing. So that's sort of what it looks like. And when I've added all those details, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Um, I wanted to re-grout the pond again because I didn't really want to have any acrylic paint in that pond area. So I put two layers more of grouting over the top. And that's just because I found waterproofing just goes better over the top of grout and not having that acrylic paint in there at all. And it'll just make it easier to clean, it'll last longer. And then I'm blending around. So I'm blending in where I've just grouted that layer to the rest of that pond area. And yeah, I think it's looking quite natural. The waterproofing, pretty simple. Follow the instructions. And uh, it recommends to do three layers. I personally do eight. Um, and again, that's just gonna make sure it's safe for your animal to drink, soak in. The finishing touches are very important. Spotlight, a great place to go get your fake plants. I highly recommend it. And this is just a soil mixture that's in our bioactive video. Um, so you can check that out on our page. And then I absolutely loved these vines and the grass for this enclosure. So I didn't even use those ferns. I added natural rocks that looked the same to the enclosure as well. So I didn't have to create more fake rocks. If you can add natural elements, definitely go for it. You could even turn this enclosure bioactive. Now lastly, because you'll have all that spray foam showing um, through the glass, like if you're looking um, at it, you'll be able to see the spray foam you know, attaching because it is a glass enclosure. I've already done the first paint layer for this enclosure on that front panel. And when you're doing it, you can use a variety of different paints, um, but you want it to all go in the same direction. Um, so you're not gonna get any you know, horrible looking layers or streaks in the paint. I've used sticky tape to tape around um, the bit that I don't want the paint to go on. That worked out really, really well. Um, now I'm doing the side. You can see how you can seal that spray foam. It looks quite ugly, but you don't have to use paint. Um, you could use um, sort of glass covering and um, plastic sheets, you can use a variety of things. I'll put up a list of things that you can use in addition to the paint um, for the outside of your enclosure. And now we've got a almost brand spanking new enclosure. It looks, you know, pretty good. It doesn't look like a $50 enclosure anymore. Filling up that pond and now we're gonna get our girl Pearl to test it. She's a marble children's path and absolutely gorgeous. She was having a ball with this enclosure. She was exploring every nook, every cranny. She's going into the smaller cave in the video. She absolutely loved this enclosure. And again, it provides so much enrichment. And the whole thing about this enclosure build is, is increasing that surface area all the grooves in the rock, and also um, the rock sort of extending outwards as it gets higher up increases that surface area. Um, so there's more area for her to explore, and so it's not just like a, you know, 
the bottom of the enclosure and that's all there is to explore. All those levels, all those caves increase that surface area. But she is having an absolute ball. She's done an amazing job at modelling. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this build went. Looks natural, um, was what we wanted. Thank you so much guys for watching uh, this video. I hope it really helped and provided some inspiration for you to create something for your reptiles. Not only that's gonna look really good for you, uh, but is also gonna improve the quality of their lives. And uh, again, if you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future content coming out. But uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.